So what I want to cover is dropping a bright rendered backdrop into this scene that's been generated using the spherical mapper and then we'll look at how that looks in this scene, see the pros and cons of what we've got and then create a 2D face with a render of the backdrop in and drop that in as well so we can have a higher resolution area for the bits we can see directly through the perspective camera and a lower resolution area for the bits that are getting reflected. So at the moment I've got the default bright sky and three objects in here which have got a quite a reflective material on them. It's a modification of one of the materials that comes with the metals one. I think that's called a Trevenhall set. That's by the by. I'll use a keyboard shortcut 2 to switch to the overhead view. So you can see we've got a fairly wide field of view. We're in a landscape format image and I've got the sky set to a oh, darker sky. So I'm going to turn the atmosphere off. Then at this point you'll see that because the materials are so reflective, they're almost vanishing. So the, their appearance is going to be highly dependent on the background we provide, which is key to this whole process, really, because uh, the spherical map will provide us with a 360 degree by 180 degree background, much like um, a HDRI image does. And to start with, I'm going to introduce a HDRI image, but the first thing I'm going to do is save my current camera position and save this file. So I need to have this camera position because everything's going to depend on the alignment of the things in our scene. Right, in the Skylab image based lighting, use HDRI image, open. I'm going to use this uh, garage closed and I'm going to select a high resolution version. And uh, that will take a little moment to load. I'm going to increase the brightness of that as it appears in the scene. We're not worried about light output or any of the other outputs because this is just for the backdrop and add it to the sky I'm gonna see that the Sun's disabled and then I'm just gonna set the atmosphere to fully black so you can see what we've got here so that's a HDRI image so I don't really need the spherical mapper with a HDRI image because I can export HDRI images in spherical maps anyway but if I've got additional content in the scene that's uh, that's coming from Bryce then that makes things a different matter. So I'm going to create uh, some more objects in this scene. So what should we have? Something to make life complex for ourselves. So I'll, I didn't want a tree. It's a bit hard to get hold of that rock there. You need to click on that bottom right hand corner there. Right there's a, a rock and I'm going to modify the material of this to being reflective just like that. So we're going to go reflect plenty of the background and go edit and random replicate and we'll have 200 of those objects there. Then I can use the selection tool here to select that and I'm going to distribute them via this uh, control here. So let's say 3D distribute and then just move them around so we've got a fair scattering of them randomly around the camera in our scene. Let's see how that looks. So you can see it's obscured some of the other objects in our scene but that's not really a problem because I just want something that's actually around this scene that we can capture into the background so these rocks will do and it's just to add some complexity and show we can capture things from within Bryce so I'm just distributing those around I'll get get them out the front of the camera if I can but I have plenty of them around generally so there you go we can see there's quite a few of these things and they're reflecting the backdrop so what I'm going to do now is I need to get rid of these objects that I don't want to capture into the scene so that's just the cylinder and the mesh and the sphere so they're now gone and I'm going to need the spherical mapper to map this scene from this point in space so I need to, I've got my camera position saved so I need to set my camera position now to the world origin so I just go naught 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 so it's got no rotation on it and now I'll bring in my spherical mapper which is uh, from a product made by Horrible and myself. So there we go. I'll just drop that in. And I'll drop that down to the world origin so it coincides with the camera and link it to the perspective camera. So it's now bolted to the camera. So if I move the camera back to its original position, it will take the spherical mapper with it, like so. Now I need to now correct the rotation of the perspective camera but keep it in its uh, present place. So I'll just set its rotations to zero. And then in order to spherical map, I need to I'll modify the document setup so it's a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. I'm going to reduce the render size 
So I've halved the render size there, so it'll be fairly quick to render. And I'm going to change it to 360 degree panoramic projection camera. So that is now our spherical map. So I'll just save that file. So save as, so SM background. I'll just take a little while to save because I did load the uh, HDRI image in. Uh, because I'm doing this in stages, I'm saving this scene. But uh, if you were doing it, you could just export the image and not bother saving the scene with the HDRI image embedded in it. It's just that because I'm trying to demonstrate something. So, if I go back to my original file, which uh, which I'll launch now, and you'll remember was the one with the, the blue background, and then we'll we'll put a sphere into this and we'll look at this with the spherical mapped image on it. So I'll create a sphere and I'm just going to drop that down to the world origin, edit, enlarge it. Now no light can get into this at the moment and we can't see anything on it. I'm going to run it on uh, global ambient so we can see. So go into the material lab, put a blob in ambient, switch it to picture, go into the texture source editor, navigate to where I've saved my spherical map image, there it is, check out. It defaults to sinusoidal in this case but it needs to be spherical. I need full ambient output and if I want the sunlight to light things in this scene I need to turn cast shadows off so the light can get inside this backdrop. And now I'll give this a render. What you might have noticed is that the background is not aligned as it was in the original so this is just because of the way that the mapping's done on a Bryce sphere that's e easy to correct. In the attributes, rotate the sphere by 180 degrees and then edit and flip X. I've uh, covered this in other videos and done the operation in paint packages but uh, that's another way of going about it. So we've got our spherical map which is providing nice reflections but what I wanted to emphasize here by rendering it at a low resolution is that it, it the, the resolution uh, looks very low because of the narrow field of view, well, narrow compared with the entire spherical map. I mean, it's a fairly wide field of view for rendering a scene, but this is just to emphasize the problem that uh, I've got here, is that I need a very high resolution spherical map, which would have a huge memory footprint and could take a long time to render just to provide the reflections, which are from areas which we can't even see directly. So. It, this, really, this area at the back here needs to be the high resolution bit. This this area behind the camera doesn't need to be such a high resolution, which is why I was saying if we can capture a 2D face for the, just for the bit where we want the high resolution, that would help us greatly. So if I go back to my image which I was uh, using for the spherical map, and I'll just go and modify the document set. And bear in mind, we've still got a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. I've worked this out for 2 to 1 aspect ratio, back to just a full screen render size. I don't need the, uh, the, the spherical mapper now, so I can just get rid of that. And I'm going to use a 2D face. Uh, if I create a 2D face, like so, and in the attributes, you'll see it's coming above the origin, but I'm going to set it down to the origin and we've still got our present camera position recorded as I did before and what I want to do is move the camera to the world origin now so I'm going to move the camera to naught, naught, naught and then we're going to look at this 2D face I can just select it with the little control down there go to the attributes and move it away from the camera in the Z axis so that's 1000 and I'm going to make it 2000 high and 4,000 wide on the scale. So that will now align to our 2 to 1 aspect ratio. And then if I go to the attributes, I'm going to link that to the perspective camera. And then restore my camera position. Now, here's the bit that had to be worked out. If I select my perspective camera, I need specific values in here for the field of view and scale so that it will exactly align with the 2D face so we can capture that as a backdrop. So what I need to do here is enter the value 138 and this is 72.656, a value you will recognize if you watch the other videos on capturing a, a cube face. So I just chose that value so because that one's, I remember that one now because of capturing cube faces and this is a integer number. So 
because the, the spherical map is not perfect, there's not a 100% alignment along the edges, but it's pretty close, which I'll show you. So, okay, right. Switch back to my camera now. I've modified my field of view. Give it a quick render, and you can see that dark area is my 2D face. So for the time being, if I select my 2D face, I'll just hide that object. Okay, right now, I'm gonna, that's that's going to be my backdrop. But bear in mind, this is quite a wide field of view. First of all then I'm going to change the document setup and just capture it a bit larger so that will compensate for the fact that we'll be looking within this square somewhere so we're not seeing the whole render now there's so much of it on the right here and so much down below um, and you can see obviously it takes a little while to render but it wouldn't it would take much longer to render at this resolution for an entire spherical map which is the point and the 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 idea is to get this to fit exactly into where we're going. So I'll go file and save as and call this uh, 2D background. 2D background. Save. Okay, so that's going to take a little moment to save that. Let's go back to our other file now, which will be somewhere out here. This is with our spherical mapped with sphere in, so I'm going to save as and call that. That's automatically incremented because I've got a number at the end, so that's background 2. Right, now that's been saved, I'll just close that file and we'll get back to our one and hopefully that's now saved its file. Excellent, right. At this point then, I can copy, edit, copy the 2D face which is selected and then I'll drop my background too that I've just saved in over this scene and go edit and paste and that's dropped the 2D face in in front of the camera. Now I'll modify the attributes of this 2D face so we can see it and, and that'll just be black because I've not actually done anything about modifying the material. So in the material uh, I don't want it to cast shadows because that'll let light through. I'm going to have it driven by ambient like the background, drop a blob in for ambient, switch to picture, go to texture source editor and load in my 2D face which is there. So that's loaded in, check out of that, check out of that, and now render. And we've got the 2D face in front of the camera, providing the high resolution image, and the spherical map providing low resolution for the reflections, which uh, are on, on this side of the cube, but facing behind the camera. So to see how well that's blended, if I wind the camera back now, so I've got a very wide field of view, you should see the transitional area between the low resolution spherical map that I captured and the high resolution 2D face. And this provides me with one final thing I uh, want to point out. Along this edge, you might see there's a line. And the reason for that is in the material for the 2D face that's provided, there's this option from this little arrow here on this menu of picked interpolation. And that blurs adjacent pixels somewhat anti-aliasing them, which would be fine, except when it reaches the edge of any 2D face, it anti-aliases them round to the other edge. So that causes like a wrap round effect for whatever's on here to wrap round to this edge for anti-aliasing and top and bottom's the same. So that's a little bit of inconvenience there. So now you can see that um, due to the change in resolution and the slightly imperfect nature of the spherical mapper, there are slight misalignments along this edge. But bearing in mind it's not designed to fit in like this, you would be using a narrower field of view, like so, then that really shouldn't be an issue, because you'd have the issue anyway of the, the background being of a lower resolution. So, um, fairly complicated uh, process, I would say. Uh, I would think that somebody who was familiar with uh, DAS Studio would be able to export both these into DAS Studio and get a similar effect. Now I'm not familiar with DAS Studio myself, but uh, I, I don't think it could be beyond the realms of reason to, to duplicate that. The main issue I think would be is working out where the DAS Studio camera was relative uh, in, in space to where the Bryce camera was so you could put in an adjustment to get the camera in exact position because this only really works from one camera position now. If I move the camera then the 2D face is going to move 
out of alignment with the, uh, the the sphere in the background and obviously you've got choices to make in your scene depending on what the environment is as to what size you want your 2D face and how far away you want it from the objects in the scene so there's uh, quite a bit of flexibility in this uh, process so anyway that's the end of the video I hope you found that interesting and instruction instructional and uh, that you'll be able to use this technique in your own renders